recently, my husband and I went to Washington, D.C. to witness the swearing and ceremony of Barack Obama. It was quite an adventure. We decided to drive. Um, we left Chicago around noon or 1 o'clock on Friday, and um, we knew it was going to be a long trip, and we just tried to enjoy it. We brought trivia cards, we played trivia, and read grim fairy tales to each other. It was fun. Um, by nighttime, we were getting into um, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, or something like that. And it was so dark, and the mountains were horrible. We have really bad headlights, and it was going up those hills. You could not see it looked like we were just heading into a black hole. I mean, it was really late at night, so there weren't many cars out, and every time a car would come up, we would try to keep up with them, but my husband kind of drives like grandpa, very slow. So we had to um, just basically, it was just us on the road with our very dim headlights. It was an interesting experience. So we're just driving along, and finally around 2, 2.30 in the morning, we're getting into D.C., and my husband's going down a small incline, and he was like, the car keeps accelerating, I can't stop it from accelerating, I'm trying to brake. And I remembered I had read an article before about um, this young girl who had a ridiculously expensive car that she should never have. She was like 16, driving like a Jaguar or something. And she was going, she was in a big city, in like a town area, and that happened to her, and they were saying that it might have been because um, the floor mat could slide up under the uh, gas pedal, and then you, it like lodge it, get your gas pedal stuck, and you would just keep going. Luckily it was 2.30 in the morning, nobody really on the street, so we could safely pull over on the side of the highway, and it was the um, format that water the, the gas pedal. We got it out, and it's still in my back seat. I refuse to put it back under, uh, on the floor, on the driver's side, because I never want to have that experience ever again. So I finally get to his brother's house. We're staying with uh, his brother and his wife in Alexandria, VA, or Virginia. Um, and so, um, we just slept in the next day, and then Sunday came, and we decided we were going to go to the concert that they were having with all of the um, famous people. And we went there, and we got there like four hours early. And the closer you got, the less you could see, because the stage was so high. And we stood there for a while, and we went back and forth, we were going to stay or going to go. Finally, I just decided that we would go because I wanted to see museums and it would be really our only opportunity. So we went to the Natural History Museum and um, the National History or something. And we got to see the um, all this Lincoln stuff, like his famous top hat and his clothing, some stuff from the White House when he was there. Also, some of Mary Todd's clothes. It was really interesting. We saw, like, a fraction of the museum. There was just so many people there that we just wanted to go. And then we went over to the Natural History... Or, I'm sorry. Yeah, the Natural History Museum, I believe. With the dinosaurs and all that kind of stuff. Just made a quick run in, check it out. Um, I really love D.C. because all the museums are free. Whereas here in Chicago, it's so... It's not so expensive. I mean, some of them are pretty expensive, but it was nice because you could just be like, oh, I'm going to just run in and see something. And you don't have to feel like you're paying $20 and you need to really see it all. So that was nice. So we went, uh, and then we went to the National Archives, and we saw the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence and the Bill of Rights. The poor Declaration of Independence is just so worn out, I'm sure. You know, for a while it wasn't really being preserved, and I like tried, but it's just you can't, you can barely see anything on the document. And um, you're supposed to take flash photography, and my husband made that mistake of accidentally taking a picture with flash. Luckily, they didn't like call him to jail or anything. No. <laughs> um, it's just funny. He was a little like startled by it, not expecting the flash to go off, and everyone to <gasps> look at him. 
but um so we're going to see it was fun because we got to see Nick's brother and his wife and a lot of times at night we would just hang out and play like board games or the Wii and have a few drinks it was really nice because Nick and I were so busy we really don't have the opportunity to even just enjoy, enjoy each other's company so it was nice and then Inauguration day. Well, the day before the inauguration, everyone was planning leaving, like, kind of later than I expected. I was thinking we'd live, like, 6 or 7 in the morning, but everyone else took about 9, 9.30, and I'm thinking, can we leave at that time? We're never going to be able to make it down because of the expected crowds. But, um, so we left, or Nick gets up to get around, and he turns on CNN, and he said, um, it's looking pretty cool down there. I don't know if we're going to be able to make it. And inside, I was immediately, like, really upset because this was the reason why we drove all the way to Washington, D.C., being broke and having a very, very bad car. And I was just like, I'm going. I'll go by myself. I don't care. But, so we all got down to the train. And luckily, it wasn't that hard getting down there. And we found a spot. Um, there was a lot of people there. And there were the Jumbotron... Our view of the Jumbotron wasn't that good. Uh, there were like trees in the way. But there was a tall man in front of me that had a video camera that had his little viewfinder popped out. And so that's how I watched the inauguration. That man videotaping or recording the um, Jumbotron. And I was looking through his viewfinder. Uh, but it was worth the experience. I was there. So that was exciting. And then when we went to leave, everyone was, like, stuck on the mall. Every time we tried to go somewhere, they'd be like, you can't go out this way. There's just barricades up all over. Nobody knew what was going on. So we tried to get out one way, find out you can get out that way. So then we turn around try another way. While all this is going on, we see this little boy wandering around. And, I'm, and I step, and I try to help him, and he's ignoring me. And I was like, oh, he's probably not supposed to talk to strangers. So I just... You know, kind of got down, and I told him, like, oh, it's okay, I'm just trying to help you, I want to help, you know, make sure you get home safely today, and he knew his parents' phone number, but there was just so much cell phone traffic, he couldn't get through, and so we looked for a few minutes for his parents, we didn't wander, want, want to wander off too far with him, so I, we went and tried, we found a, there was a lot of military police there, so we gave him to the military police, and I don't know. I just looked online to look up an article and it said that 30 children were lost during the inauguration and all of them were reunited with their families. So I'm sure William made it back to back home. That makes me sleep better at night. So anyway, um, so we keep getting in these like massive crowds, like not moving and then it would just be a huge crowd of people and you hear ambulance and you're like, uh-oh, everyone's going to have to stop you. I was just afraid that if you stop walking, people are just going to keep walking and trample over you, and I was going to die. I'm kind of a paranoid person. Anyway, so we're walking, and this cop, all these cops, they don't really know what's going on. You're like, where should I go? And they send you a certain way, and then you find out there's not an exit there. So this cop was like, just keep going that way. Just go a few blocks, it'll clear up. So we go some way, I don't know where I was, um, down a few blocks, and... We see this highway, and all the highways from Virginia to Washington, D.C. were closed down. So we see this highway, and there's people walking down it. I mean, this is like a huge, like, five-lane interstate. And so we just jump over the barriers and start walking down the interstate. We walked for about two or three miles. We actually walked into Virginia. And it was actually the 395, which I guess is like, you know, it's that road that goes right to D.C., Walked down there for a few miles, and all of a sudden there's all these military men. I kind of felt like it was like a natural disaster, or someone was like bombing America and everyone's fleeing. It was weird. And so they told us we had to get off the highway here, and we got to this mall, and luckily there's a train down there. We got on the train, and luckily we got back to our car safely. And it's kind of sad, when I came back to Chicago... Um, I had more trouble getting downtown on the blue line during rush hour than I did getting home from D.C. Or getting back, you know, forth from the inauguration. I thought that was interesting. 
but that's a very brief synopsis of what happened in um, D.C. We're so happy that we went. It was really a moment in history, and you could just really feel the love in the air and just everyone hoping that, you know, everything works out, regardless of what political party you belong to.